Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do an absolute classic beef dish, beef wellington, or boeuf en croute if you are French. Before we start, shout out to my new super fan, Kiza Lynn de la Franque, and my new Patreon ordinary fan, but I still love you, Joe Lethbridge. So thanks guys, much appreciated. Now this was requested by Connor Hardacre recently, but um, a year or two ago by A. James Riley, and he wanted me to do the, the Gordon Ramsay technique of sort of wrapping it with uh, pancakes or crepes to stop your bottom pastry going soggy. More about that later. I did actually do it at the time, but it failed miserably. Here's a bit of footage of what it looked like. I mean, it, it tasted great. It just looked awful. So, uh, yeah. If you're going to make this, it's a very special dish. It's got to be perfect, or as close to perfect as you can get it. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, become a patron, make a donation. And without further ado, let's make Beef Wellington. So beef wellington is normally done with fillet of beef, which is, or the tenderloin, you might know it as. It costs a fortune. Uh, currently, at Morrison's, well, yesterday, it was uh, £28 a kilo. So what I thought was, you only use that cup so that it will cook from raw inside the pastry uh, in about 40 minutes without burning the pastry. So I thought, what if it was pre-cooked sous vide? So it's lovely, lovely tender chunk of meat, whatever whatever the cut, it'll be tender if you cook it at the right temperature and for the right time. And then we work with that. So here it goes. I've got top side of beef. This was 12 pounds a kilo and I've got about 700 grams there. The only thing is it's the wrong it's the wrong shape. It should be more of a, a cylinder and that kind of you know diameter. So I'll I'll just trim it. And make it so. So that's going to be my beef, my beef wellington, and I'm sure it's going to be lovely, but I, I need to season it with salt, pepper and thyme. Now we'll sort out our sous vide gadget. Right, I've got my immersion circulator heating to, well already heated actually, to 56 degrees Celsius, and I've got my incredibly noisy vac packer thing and a bag. So I'm going to pop the the beef wellington into the bag and suck the air out of it. Now it's sealing it. Right, done. So I'm going to hoik that in there for four hours and uh, I'm going to do these ones these spare bits as well because I can. So this dish does appear in the prawn cocktail years but I'm not actually following their recipe although I am following their recommendation for rough puff pastry. What I need to do first is chill this butter this is 200 grams of unsalted butter it's going in the freezer for about half an hour till it's really hard. And then I've got 200 grams of mushrooms and a medium large-ish onion in instalments. And I need to chop both of these really fine to make the duxelle. So if you've got any kind of chippy choppy machine that can do this, I highly recommend that you use it. Because I, I haven't. So it's the knife. Which isn't even magic. Okay, now I'm gonna cook the duxel. So I'm melting a big blob of butter in a frying pan, and then I'll add the finely chopped mushrooms and onion. And once that's got going, we'll add some salt, ground black pepper, thyme. So we'll let those cook down for, well, as long as it takes. We want as much moisture to evaporate from that lot as we can, so it's almost like a dry paste when it's finished. So that's looking pretty much done. When I push it away, there's no extra liquid coming out. Uh, and when I squash it, there's no free liquid to be had. So I guess that's done. So I'll take it off the heat and set it aside until we need it. 
Okay, now to make the pastry, I've got some, um, well, I will have 250 grams of plain flour, all purpose flour. Yep, 254. Eight teaspoons of salt. Now, get your chilled butter. And what you want to do, keep it wrapped up a bit, dip the end in flour, because apparently that makes it easier to grate, and grate it in. Dip it in the flour every now and again. Okay, that's what we've got, our kind of flour and shredded butter mix. And now I've got some iced water, and I'm just going to add a tablespoon at a time. And stir it in until it all comes together in a bowl. So, tis done. I used up, well, almost the whole glass, just a little bit left. And this is what it looks like. So you can still see the separate kind of streaks of butter. And we want to keep that. We don't want to make it all homogenous because then it won't be puff kind of pastry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to cover that and chill it in the fridge till we're ready for it. Now for the crepes, I've got 75 grams of plain all-purpose flour, half a cup, 125 ml of milk, one egg, and a pinch of salt. So pinch salt in with the flour, quick stir, and mix in the milk, and the egg. Anyway, we make these crepes to try and stop the lovely luscious juices from getting into the pastry. Right, that needs to rest for 30 minutes. Now here's the beef from the sous vide. I should mention this this was yesterday. I'll just cut that open. I've got some nice juices there that we'll save for a sauce or a gravy later. And you want to get your beef and pat it dry. Now we need to give that a good hard sear on all sides. Get a nice crunchy coating of acrylamides. Mmm. And uh, so I've got my fabulous non-stick blue diamond pan, which is still going strong. And I've got the heat on hot and I'm not going to use any oil to start with, but we'll see how we get on with the non-stickness. Now, while it's still hot, you want to paint it all over with Dijon mustard. Time to cook the crepe. So I've got a bit of butter melting in the frying pan and I've got my batter. I actually, I've added a teeny bit more milk to this to you know, make it runnier because it seemed a bit too thick. I'll let that cook for a few minutes and then <laughs> we have the interesting challenge of turning it over because it's, it's quite an enormous thing and um, and I'm not feeling brave enough to toss it. Yes! <laughs> well, that was easier than I expected. Let's make Wellington. I've got too much of everything, probably, because the chunk of meat isn't that massive. It needs to be about five mil, a uh, quarter of an inch-ish thick. So I've cut the bottom edge straight. I want to cut the... the uh, Crepe. We'll cut the bottom straight ish. Then I'll pop that on the pastry. <clears throat> and I'll pop the beef onto that. So I'll just trim the top edge of the crepe. We don't want to fully enclose the beef in it. I'll just get rid of that for a moment. Of course we need to spread this with books out. Nice, even, smooth layer. Okay, so let's put this back on there. Yeah, I've, I've slightly done this the wrong way around because you want the seal to be on the bottom, but this is going to be the top and it's got to be the top because of, because of where the crepe is. That was far too much pastry there, that would be about, oh, <laughs> that would be a very thick mouthful. Well, this is embarrassing. You know, I've gone on at length about banning single-use plastic in our kitchen, but sometimes you just got to. So, good old clean film. 
and this is about three layers and I think I might give it another one because we want this really really chilled really firm and you know really kind of tight okay now I'm just about ready to do final assembly and decoration and then baking it unfortunately the oven is uh, not behaving so I'm gonna do it in the air fryer remember this thing from uh, well, last year it is essentially a convection oven so so I'm preheating it to 200 Celsius because it is a convection oven uh, that would be 220 for a conventional one and that's gas 7 so I've just rolled out some of the puff pastry quite thinly and I'm cutting some leaves to decorate the uh, Wellington earth I am worried about this spreading out into a big wide flat thing like the last one I did so uh, I think I'm gonna do it start it off at least in this loaf tin fits pretty well and remove it halfway through and that way with a bit of luck we'll get a nicely shaped welly it does mean that I won't be able to get decoration on the sides but um, that is not the end of the world right, I've got some uh, egg wash beaten egg with a splash of milk and I'm going to paint the Wellington all over well not the underside but top and sides and ends and that will make a nice glue for our applied decoration. <laughs> okay. All right, there's our fancy looking Wellington. And I'll just wash my hands first before I try and get it into the tin. <laughs> right, I'm actually very nervous. Okay. In you go. Ooh. This might turn out to be a really bad idea, but it's what I'm doing. So, right, that's pretty easy. So I'm going to put this in for 15 minutes, uh, take it out, try and get it out of the tin, and then probably another 15 minutes. All right, first 15 minutes is up, so let's have a look at what we got. Well, Oh, we've got this pastry top and a ton of um, liquid in there so well obviously we've got a, a leak but um, well let's see if we can salvage that oh yeah that isn't the disaster I thought it might be so back in for another 15 minutes Getting slightly tired of beef. <laughs> you roast beef. She just called me roast beef just because she's half French. <laughs> and now, darling, it's taste test time with Madame Damn. Keith Cuisines. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, that looks pretty. I know. Look at that. Yeah. So what I'm going to do? Wow. I'm trying to. Yeah. It's got a lovely meat slice. Oh, let's have a look at the sogginess of the bottom, 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 the bottom, bottom, the bottom, the bottom is not soggy, the bottom is beautiful, <laughs> okay, it is indeed, and I have to say the way that meat, the, the colours of that meat is fantastic, uh, it's not like the crust on a pork pie is it, it's lovely and light and fluffy, deal with it honey, <laughs> oh well, oh, that looks alright, it is, I'll eat it, Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> I was whinging it, I was just saying. I just want some beans on toast. <laughs> mm. Well, last week was birth bourguignon, wasn't it? Yeah. And we've, we've just about finished We're eating it. We're birthed out. It's so good. He's turned it into pie filling and all sorts. It's been marvellous. We haven't finished and it. And here though. we are. I said, we've nearly finished it. <laughs> well, this is, um, well, I'm impressed. I don't have to do it for another five years. Yeah. Mm. Amazing pastry. Always. Mm. This is lovely. I haven't got to the mushrooms bit yet. The mushrooms? Is it mushrooms? Mm -hmm. no, what? Yeah, it is, yeah. isn't it? Mushroom duck stuff. This is a treat. Mm -hmm. mm. 
I think we ought to say goodbye to these people on account of... What people? We've got nothing else to say, really, apart from... Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and see you next time. Mm -hmm.